What's up guys? How are you all doing? I hope you had a great week. Welcome to a beautiful but gloomy, a little bit smoky day in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, even though it's gloomy, I'm having a great day. I got 70, 77 minutes in on the treadmill earlier and I'm gonna do another little treadmill run after this. Keep it indoors, stay out of the smoke. But in the meantime, I wanted to shoot this video for you guys. And it's more a little bit of a story on my part. Uh, so I wanna tell you guys about the most important race I ever ran. As I say that, you may be thinking about maybe NCAA cross or you know one of the European championships, but it actually wasn't a race I won. It was the complete opposite. It was you know right in the middle of my high school running career, but it was a race that came at a really important time for me for really important reasons. And I think as, as you guys are probably beginning your high school or college running seasons, uh, the lesson that I learned from this race, I think it'd be really applicable and really important to remember and to keep in mind as the season progresses, because I think that, you know, if I never had this race or the realization I had after the race, uh, I wouldn't have been able to have the career that I had, you know, in between back then and today. So without further ado, let's just get into it. And I'll tell you guys about the most important race I ever ran. So to get into it, let's set the scene. So the year is 2017. I'm moving into my junior cross country season in high school. So I'm running in Florida at the time and this whole season in my junior year now was focused on how can we make it to the national meet as a team. So the goal was NXN and in order to make it to NXN, you have to run at the regional meet. There's all these different sections of the country. And if your team is one of the top two teams in your region, then you get to go to the national championship. Kind of like how in college, a lot of teams run pre-nats or in high school, a lot of teams run pre-states where you run the course, you know, earlier in the season so that you can take that experience into the actual really important race. Uh, we were doing kind of a pre-NXN race at this very famous high school meet called the Great American Cross Country Festival. Also at the time, uh, this course was widely renowned as one of the fastest courses ever, where you're gonna set a huge PR way faster than, the, than you've ever run. And for us kids running out of Florida, it was a long drive to you know, better weather than we were usually racing in. And it was just supposed to be absolutely incredible. You know, we were gonna run really fast. We were gonna crush everybody else, show why we deserve to be on the national scene. And everyone on our team was really excited. It felt like based on what I heard from the course that, you know, you can basically walk it with your eyes closed and you're gonna set a personal best. So we jogged the course the day prior. The course felt amazing. You know, it was just like we, we watched videos of the course so we knew exactly what it looked like. Everything felt great, the legs felt fresh, and we were ready for the race. So the gun goes off, I go out with the front pack. I'm, you know, competitive, I'm up there. You get through the first loop, feeling great. In the second loop, I just feel a little bit tired. Um, I don't feel amazing, but I'm still trying my absolute best. At this point, I was lucky enough to be in a position where I was leading the scoring five uh, on my high school team. And, and so where I finished as the low stick was really important for you know, what our chances would be realistically to uh, actually make it to nationals. And I remember I was just fighting and fighting and fighting and thought I was gonna do so, so, so well. And I think once that reality sets in, that you realize you're not running as fast as you thought you were gonna run, or maybe you're not placing as highly as you thought you would place, uh, it starts to compound and, and you start going slower than you maybe would have if you if you just completely forgotten about all these things that you felt like you were obligated to do. And I remember finishing, you know, just being super miserable uh, as I got across the finish line. I ended up in 10th place running 15.27. My PR at the time was 15.07. You know, I was super bummed. I was really upset and I remember as a team, I, I, we were in seventh place. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you need a top two at the NXM meet, which is actually a little bit more competitive uh, than this meet. Nobody raced how they thought you were, we were going to. You know, we felt invincible going in and were proven very quickly that we were not. And as I walked off the line, there was this key feeling that I'll never forget, where I had this moment where I was thinking to myself, I could feel sort of that, that misery, that wallowing, trying to set in, which I think is super normal. You know, it's a very normal response to a race like that but I just noticed how I felt like it was dragging me down in that moment. And I took a moment to think about, is this really the best I can do? Is this really the best way I can respond to this? And most importantly, is this helpful for me? Feeling this misery going to propel me to my goals. Self-loathing and, and being overly critical, I think those things can tend to, to make you clam up and do the opposite and not wanna chase things as much as you usually do. And so I remember in that moment thinking, is there any other way I can respond to something like this. The conclusion that I came to, the, the reason we came to this race 
was not to be invincible, it wasn't to PR, it was to learn as much as we could so that we could apply it when it really mattered. And therefore, you know, in this race, it didn't really matter. And it was honestly pretty good that things went horribly because in those situations, it's easiest to learn from your mistakes when you actually made them. You know, we made a ton of mistakes over the race. There are a ton of different places. You know, I felt like I would have pushed differently or maybe I was too aggressive or not aggressive enough. And so I kind of just, for a moment, I paused, tried not to let negativity set in and tried to think, how am I going to use this to build myself into a better runner so that you know a month or two down the road I won't make these mistakes. So that was really hard at the time, but I thought about it, you know, I tried to keep the faith, keep my positivity high. I was able to bounce back, had some great races after that. And then when I came back, and I think we'd sort of rallied behind that sentiment. So when we came back to the course, I think we were a lot more level headed. We thought about how we can improve, and every single guy on our team PR'd and we made it by seven points. Uh, our team was second and we made it to NXN. I ended up third uh, and I executed it so much better. And I think in that moment is when it truly crystallized in my brain that you know when the going gets tough, when things don't go exactly how you plan, there's two ways you can really respond to it. You can let it get you down or you can maybe take a second, think about you know what did I learn from that experience? I've already experienced it. It was a bummer, felt those feelings. Now how can I use that to my advantage and learn as much as I possibly can to make myself a better athlete and a better person. Because I think that this lesson is the most important race in my life because it's not just applicable to running. I think about this stuff all the time. Back when I was just starting YouTube, if I posted a YouTube video and nobody watched it, I didn't worry too much about, you know, it's negative reception. I just thought about, you know, maybe what else can I do? What other stuff can I try? What might people be more receptive to? And what can I change to maybe make it better? There's all these different things, you know, in school and life, and also running that you can apply this lesson to. And it's been so, so, so helpful to me. When I'm at a crossroads, when things seem like they're really tough, I try to think, what can I gain from this negative experience rather than what have I just lost? And that I think is the most important idea and something in a way I hope you guys don't need, but I think we probably all will at some point in our lives. So I hope it's helpful uh, heading into this new cross country season. And also, I almost forgot, announcing the winner of the giveaway. I did a random number generator and ended up landing on the comment from LMFA Hawks 3332, who's gonna get, they're gonna get some brand new cross country dragonfly spikes, which will hopefully help them through the cross country season. I pinned the comment, you know, to the top of my comment section. So if you're watching this video, Please comment down below, drop either your Instagram handle or just some way we can get in contact. And I can't wait to get you those shoes. The giveaway was super fun. I was amazed by how many responses I got from you guys. So hopefully it's something we'll be able to do in the future. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. So if you thought that story was interesting and applicable, you know, maybe drop in the comments a time that you had a similar realization, or maybe just tell me what the most important race for you has been so far and why it was so important. Uh, I hope you guys have an incredible rest of your week. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Till then, I'll see you guys when I see you.